Uh, thank you, Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I think the tetralogy is much simpler than Chris Cross Heart. So just uh, take it easy. <laughs> so I'd like to uh, uh, have a lecture about uh, the morphology and treatment of tetralogy fallow. The morphology of <coughs> tetralogy fallow was first described by Neil Stenson in 1671. Uh, Neil Stenson was a Danish anatomist and naturalist. In 1888, a, a French doctor, Dr. Fallot, uh, used, uh, described the morphology of tetralogy Fallot in detail, and he used first the term tetralogy for, for anomalies. Uh, Dr. Abbott, Canadian pediatric cardiologist, used this the term tetralogy of Fallot in 1924 uh, because he thought Tetralogy of Fallot is just a simple and convenient rather than description of all four anomalies. Uh, the morphology of Tetralogy of Fallot has been described, uh, but, uh, this has been well described uh, Dr. Bampura and uh, Dr. Anderson in contemporary era, uh, but uh, they used uh, somewhat uh, different terminologies. Uh, Dr. Bampura used the term septal band uh, uh, for the Y-shaped uh, prominent muscle bundle uh, supporting a pulmonary valve and tricus valve uh, at the uh, right ventricular septal wall. But Dr. Anderson described it trabecular septum marginalis. For the muscle bundle extending from infundibular septum toward the right side, uh, right ventricular free wall, uh, Dr. Van Pura described it a parietal band, but Dr. Anderson uh, described it the crista supraventricularis. Uh, for the septum uh, separating uh, two alteral valves, Dr. Bampura called it conal septum, but Dr. Anderson described it the uh, outlet septum. Uh, Dr. Anderson uh, specified the septoparietal trabeculations here, uh, which is a, a multiple, a multiple muscular bundles extending from anterior limb of trabeculoseptal septum marginalis toward the left side pre-wall of right ventricle. Dr. Anderson uh, beautifully showed us a small Auli septum in normal heart uh, through the uh, medicalous uh, dissection of the heart like this. Dr. Anderson uh, defined the crista supraventricularis as a muscular structure separating tricus valve and pulmonary valve in the loop of right ventricle. This uh, crista supraventricularis consists of three parts. The first one is uh, ventricular infundibular fold, uh, which is uh, uh, inner curvature uh, between semilunar valves and atrioventricular valves. The second one is subpulmonary infundibulum, and the third one is uh, muscular auli septum between anterior and posterior limbs of trabecular septum marginalis. In normal heart, these stru uh, three structures are united, and it is not possible to distinguish into uh, discrete areas. But in tetralogy of Fallot, uh, these united structures are separated, uh, especially the muscular only septum uh, is uh, anterocephalal debated. As you can see here, this is a, a debated, uh, anterocephalal debated only septum. The original site of Aulia septum is here, so uh, this uh, enterocephalar deviation produces larger hole between, uh, in, uh, between uh, 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 two ventricles and uh, produce uh, mm. overriding of aorta. Dr. Anderson and Dr. Bampra had a different opinion in making right ventricle output obstruction in tetralogy follow. Dr. Anderson uh, think that Combination of deviated uh, Auli septum and uh, uh, septoparietal trabeculation can pro uh, produce the right ventricle outflow obstruction. But Dr. Vampura uh, thinks that underdevelopment of subpulmonary infundibulum uh, causes a failure of normal expansile growth of infundibulum, which create uh, right ventricle outflow obstruction and malaligned VSD.
So uh, uh, they have also a, a, a two different uh, uh, ideas for the strategy of surgical management. Dr. Anderson recommends wide resection of septal parietal trabeculations, but Dr. Van Pra recommends uh, just the restoration of RBOT volume with a patch instead of myocardial resection. This is Isenmenga complex. You, as you can see here, this is enterocephalate debated Aulis septum here, but there is no right ventral outflow obstruction. So this is why uh, Dr. Uh, Anderson uh, emphasized, emphasized uh, septal parietal trabeculations uh, in making tetralogy of follow. Uh, uh, this slide shows the margins of ventricular septal defect. So at the floor, uh, the both limbs of trabecular septal marginal is here, and the anterior margin, the outlet septum, at the, uh, at the roof of the right ventricle, ventricular impundibular fold, at the inferior and posterior margin, uh, there is a remnant of uh, membrane septum over tricuspid valve. This is a typical perimembranous VSD in tetralogy follow. Uh, at the uh, imperial and posterior rim, there is uh, a, co a fibrous continuity between tricuspid valve, tricuspid valve and aortic valve and mitral valve. We frequently see the membrane split, uh, which is a remnant of uh, uh, membrane septum. Uh, which is uh, very important for surgeons because uh, this uh, fibrotic tissue uh, can be used as anchorage site of the uh, VSD patch. The AV node is located the core triangle as seen in normal heart. Then the penetrating uh, bundle uh, perforates the central fibrous body and learning just below the membrane flap. So it is very important uh, to make uh, uh, stitches uh, not to uh, uh, stitches too deeply uh, in this area. And the non-branching bundle, and the non-branching bundle is learning uh, left uh, septal side, a little bit uh, away from the crest of uh, interventricular septum, then making left bundle branches here. Right bundle branch perforate the, uh, penetrate the interventricular septum toward the base of medial papillary muscle. Uh, this cartoon shows, uh, is showing that uh, how to make the stitches in closing VSD in the perimembranous VSD with membranous flap. As you can see here, in this defect, uh, you can see here the muscle bar beneath the tricuspid valve here. So this muscle bar is uh, uh, formed by a fusion of ventric impundibular fold and well-developed posterior limb of trabecular septum marginalis. So there must be an intact uh, membrane septum here. So this uh, muscle bar is very good site for anchorage, uh, anchorage of the breast patch. So this, uh, uh, about the one fifth of the patient had a defect like this. If there is uh, no membrane flap over a muscle bar beneath the tricuspid valve, uh, we have to make uh, stitches at the base of uh, tricuspid valve during VST closure uh, to uh, avoid uh, bundle, uh, uh, conduction bundle system damage. Uh, this in rare case, there is no muscular outlet septum uh, as seen in uh, norm, uh, simple uh, subalteral VST, but still the pulmonic valve is uh, small. But in this uh, special uh, a defect, we have to be very careful in putting the breast patch and uh, in preservation of pulmonary valve because the bulging breast patch can produce a severe right ventral outflow obstruction uh, after surgery. In general, the length of the uh, subpulmonary uh, impundibulum in tetralogy follow is longer than in normal heart. So this is overriding. The degree of overriding is a variable. This is a typical uh, pulmonary valve morphology uh, in tetralogy follow. The 75% of uh, the patient also have a bell bus analysis in tetralogy follow. Uh, more than two-thirds of patients have a bicuspid pulmonary valve 
only 15% of patients have a tricuspid valve, uh, usually non-stenotic. 70% of patients have uh, some tethering of pulmonary valve to the MPA wall, so sometimes it can cause severe sinotubular junction stenosis. In this case, the length of the free edge of the pulmonary valve is much shorter uh, than a normal cusp, so we have to keep in mind in this morphology uh, during uh, pulmonary valve repair during, uh, during surgery. Also, the uh, pulmonary trunk is uh, small, usually very short. This is a typical uh, finding of LPS stenosis and acute angle. About 10% of patients have a, a branch pulmonary stenosis. Now I'm talking about the surgery of tetralogy fallow. It has been already 65 years uh, since first uh, uh, successful repair of tetralogy fallow by Dr. Lily Hai. But uh, still, uh, there is a majority of patients have uh, residual lesions uh, after surgery. So we have to, the contemporary surgery should be focused on uh, long-term result rather than the early result. Uh, some surgeons are recommending uh, primary neonatal repair for a symptomatic neonate, but uh, still uh, there is no long-term result reported after neonatal repair. This is our current policy of tetralogy repair. We are doing elective surgery uh, between uh, three and six months of age. Uh, we, we don't do the uh, prim primary neonatal uh, repair unless the pulmonary vein is, a uh, pulmonary valve is uh, large enough to be preserved. When we uh, preserve the pulmonary valve annulus, uh, the target size of pulmonary annulus is normal pulmonary valve annulus size minus one millimeter in arrested heart. When we need transannular enlargement, the target size of RBOT opening is just a normal uh, pulmonary valve annular size in arrested heart. We are trying to preserve uh, pulmonary valve annulus as much as possible uh, without ventricular patch. We think that ventricular patch is not need uh, as far as the pulmonary valve annulus is size is sizable uh, to be preserved. Uh, in our hospital, in about 70% of patients, uh, the pulmonary valve, uh, pulmonary valve annulus can be preserved without ventricular patch. When we need transannular patch enlargement, uh, we, uh, we are using two surgical techniques depending on the pulmonary, uh, the pulmonary valve morphology. If the, uh, when the patient has anterior and posterior commission of the pulmonary valve, we uh, make a small transannular ventricular incision through anterior commissure like this. When the patient have anterior and posterior cusps like this, we divide anterior cusp and make a small transannular ventricular incision, and then we repair uh, the pulmonary valve with a uh, patch. We are doing uh, impundible muscle resection before VST closure. I think it is very important uh, because this maneuver allows us uh, to to do an extensive intipundibular muscle resection like this and to put a secure uh, VST patch. But if you do the VST patch first, so you cannot do the extensive uh, intipundibular muscle resection. When we need to uh, enlarge uh, the uh, branch pulmonary stenosis, I think the, the posterior augmentation is very important to prevent the uh, uh, kinking of patch. So we are using uh, the anterior MPA wall flap technique uh, for a posterior augmentation uh, with excellent result. Thank you very much.